I benched uh, 425 when I was 16 years old. I will finance you and set you up. You do all the steroids you want and see what happens. The question is, who is the greatest bodybuilder to not win the Mr. Olympia? To all the Titans that will be uh, checking in this week, we'll put up the post uh, tomorrow morning for all of you guys to check in and touch base with us. Uh, make sure the nutrition, your training, uh, everything, mostly the mental state of where you're going forward to and your goal setting is set. And we can actually kind of go over that goal setting as well. That's something that a lot of you guys just do the check-ins. But I'd love to kind of go over that goal setting with you guys at the same time and make sure that you guys goal sets are not just realistic um, but what's possible because I know a lot of you guys don't realize what's possible but when you get in the Titan crew what's great about that is that you guys do get to see some people that made incredible transformations because they're doing it right that's a badass thing the team just jumped on so uh, uh, I gotta just kinda give you a heads up we're gonna give out information about training and nutrition today if you wanna hang out and be in here cool deal problem is these guys have trigger fingers um, and, and they hate snowflakes so they're pretty quick on uh, snowflake mentality on blockage and we do have a, a cancel cancel culture that's right yeah what's going on where I can't see you are you talking about snowflakes again? we're talking about snowflakes again we, we got uh, Queen Bee here miss oh sheesh what's up who's the snowflake we'll find out we'll find out so it is this young lady's birthday today, so uh, we are, why are your shoulders, even with your hair over, um, all jacked up? Oh, I don't know. I can get a suntan from walking the dogs. <laughs> Just, yeah. Walks the dogs in California, get a suntan. <laughs> yes, so we were going to talk to him about uh, the situation with a couple of the clients uh, that asked me to change the nutrition for reasons that I was not very keen about. Who's that? you want to take care of it? Yeah, you you can. You, you were there for some of it, I think. Okay. You want to talk about that? Uh, are, am I gay? 100% gay is the day is long. That's me, man. I'm a pillow biter till the day the sun sets. Pillow biter, biter. Pillow biter. You guys don't know what a pillow biter. Um, hey, he probably doesn't Mona's work. my beard. We didn't just have a kid. Yeah. Um, first snowflake gone. We got one. All right, so he's banned. Um, well, thank you, thank you for the birthday wishes. I'm doing what I, I love today. I'm spending my time with my two loved ones, and that's uh, Jeffrey and Serge. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well played. The Titans. The Titans. The Titan crew yeah, is coming. Thank you guys. How much could you bench when I was 16? Uh, I benched uh, 425 when I was 16 years old. Uh, so there's a question there. Somebody just asked. Um, right there's the question. 16 years old. Um, that was the second time that I won the high school powerlifting meet. Um, I did a uh, 605 squat in the gym. Um, in the meet, I got a 555. I got a deadlift of 555 and a bench of uh, 370, um, but in the gym I got a 425. So uh, that's how much I was doing when I was 16. Um, by 19, I was doing and opening up at powerlifting meets at 705. Um, and also, my opener uh, was normally uh, 405, my opener, and then I'd go up to 455, 475 by 19. So there you go there. So answer that question. Um, just here's the thing though. The question is basic. How much do you bench when you were 16 years old? But let's go, if we can, just a little bit further than that. How long was I lifting by the time I was 16? Eight years. How long were you lifting heavy before I was 16 and competed? Eight years heavy um, for that age that I was and how strong I was. Um, back in the day when I was training in our, our junior high school and elementary school, we had a universal set and the whole goal was who was the strongest kid in the school and it had to be benching the max and it was 280 on that universal set and it didn't matter how you got it, it just as long as you benched it and man I remember putting my foot up on the bench, 
arching and turning that thing into a decline. My ass was all the way in there, and I would just basically decline that thing. Um, but I was doing that by junior high school. Um, that's eighth grade. So um, up to that point also, the big things that I was doing then was I was eating. And I wasn't eating three meals a day. I wasn't eating a breakfast, you know, cereal, uh, a lunch time at the school, and then a dinner. I was actually eating meals um, by the time I was already in junior high school and eating correctly. So that was some of the biggest things. Um, but uh, some of the great things is the eating was what set me up. That pre-puberty into puberty uh, set me up to win in life. And so what we've been doing with little Titan is setting them up to win. So by the time I was 16, I was already destined, in a sense, to be a champion because of the fact that at that pool of people, 13, 14, 15, 16, so few are doing nutrition and training. And that's even today's world, today. Um, so few are doing it. And so what you'll find in life, now that I've gone through this whole process, I'm going to give you guys a little tidbit. Uh, the ocean gets plenty full at a certain point, and then it just gets thin again. So it's thin at the beginning. When you're a young little teenager, um, or even your prepubescent days, you're very young. When you're focused on a dream, most kids don't know what the dream is. They don't know what the goal is. I did. By nine years old, I knew the goal. And so there was just a small few of us in the entire world that was living that kind of dream. And so by 17, a year later than this, this question here, 16, I was already in the muscle magazines. So already worldwide, I was in the magazines as one of the best at 17. And so there was such a few amount of us. And then there becomes plenty of us in our 20s and 30s. And then again, it goes back down to a small pool. And so why is that? Why is it that there's not that many teenagers? Everybody in their 20s and 30s, you better know what your goal is. And you better start making your dreams happen. And then it disappears again by 40, 50, and 60. You're completely out of it again. And what was it that for some reason that I was as a teenager, even before teenager, at 12, 13, 14, I was already muscular. And then I'm still in this age, in my 50s, still muscular and still doing it. It's just consistency. I know it's such the lamest thing to ever say. You guys want to hear steroids. All right, I'm going to give you everybody, and I'll even finance some of you guys that want to do steroids. I'll let you go do steroids for a year and see what you happens to do. <laughs> Jeffrey's over here going, no, start with me. <laughs> I will finance you and set you up. You do all the steroids you want and see what happens. It goes down to nutrition. I'm sorry to tell you that again. I know that either you want to push it, like most of society and snowflakes want to say it's everybody else's fault that you didn't make it. It's their fault I'm not successful. It's their fault. They're doing something that I'm not doing. It's not. It's just you're not doing it. You're the lazy one. You're the one that says you're training like a beast when you're not. You're just training wrong. Um, you're training. You're perfect on your diet when you're not. You're missing meals. You're not even doing the nutrition right. You read something that some 20-year-old told you how to do your nutrition, and so you're copying them, and it's not going to do the same thing. So it, it's all those aspects that you're kind of pushing everybody else's on the blame when it just goes back down to you. And that's what the post was about me when I was 20 years old. It, it was the consistency. By the time I was 20, I was already a veteran. I was already in the magazines for almost four years. I was um, already training for 11 years by the time I was 20. Can you imagine that? 20, how long you been training? 11 years, more than half my life at that point. How long you been dieting? The whole 11 years. So again, it goes back to the point of, all right, now what changed between then and 30 years later, over 30 years? Nothing. I just stayed true to the passion, stayed true to the training, stayed true to what the process was, and understood it's going to be a slow process. Um, if I stay consistent, I'll continue to move forward. And if I stay consistent without uh, uh, um, pushing it to the limit to where I'm just going to hurt myself or go crazy or destroy my insides, same kind of thing. And that's, that's the thing I think most of you guys miss. You guys go, well, you're really, really uh, big and muscular for this age. Well, I've been strong this whole time, and that's the anomaly. There's the word again. Anomaly that like people like Sean Ray can't explain. 
or, or these other guys that can't explain the whole concept. Um, they can't explain how it is. Can somebody stay big and muscular most of their life? Sure. There's a whole bunch of ways to do that. Can they stay strong that whole time? That's a little different. Um, that's connective tissue. That's staying healthy. That's making sure the inside of the body is the healthiest thing in the world. Um, can they stay visually youthful and healthy? Well, that's the thing that you guys all know. You guys see these 20-year-old, 30-year-old football players that look like they're 50-year-old already, or these bodybuilders who are barely out of their 20s that already fit, look 50 years old. Again, that's when they're messing up the insides. You don't want to do that in life. You want to try to build as much muscle and mass as you can in a healthy way, and then that will create your dream goal, your dream life, your dream responsibility. And then here's the biggest thing. What we do over on our YouTube is basically I talk to my young self and tell you what mistakes I made and how you can get better. I talk, the biggest part we talk about, and it's probably every single workout I mention it, is the, 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 the percentage of the craziness I went in my 20s and 30s thinking if I can train harder than everybody, if I can do more sets than everybody, then I'll be better than everybody. It doesn't work that way. Uh, first cycle. Would if I remember? ever did a first cycle, career would have been over when I won the universe. My first cycle was a Schwinn. <laughs> yeah. I had a BMX <laughs> Night Rider. Can you tell me some turn-ons for <laughs> girls? Oh. I'll tell you the biggest turn-on for girls. Be successful. Being on every magazine. <laughs> Being on every magazine. 18. You're 18 and you want to take steroids. Oh, man. Oh. You might be the dumbest kid out there. The question is, who is the greatest bodybuilder to not win the Mr. Olympia? I would say like Flex Wheeler or something like that. But Flex Wheeler got to second place. So, oh, and, and then the question there is... Uh, should he have won? Half the world says yes, the other half says no. I think uh, at that stage he should have won because then it could have took bodybuilding in a different route. Um, also, I think genetically, to be the very best, there should be a, a aspect of uh, not possible. Um, and he, Flex was that guy. This bone structure was just so superior to everybody. And the mass of his muscle and the shape... It's like there will never be another flex wheeler. There will be a lot of other guys that are just big monsters. And so that's why I think that uh, flex, um, I was okay with flex winning back in, I think it was 92, if I remember correctly. With that being said, I'm going to give you somebody else that was an extreme success without even turning pro. A guy named uh, Matt Menenhall and Jeff King, two guys. Um, both uh, AA, uh, Jeff King was an AAU Mr. America, um, and Matt Mendenhall was, um, he took second at the Nationals, he took second at the USA behind guys like Mike Christian, uh, Lee Haney. Um, these guys were so incredibly gifted and extremely incredible. Never won. Um, for some reason, just never won the big, big show to turn even pro truly successful in the realm of bodybuilding and being some of the most legendary guys in history to the guys that actually lived it and, and were present at that time. You ask any of the guys from the uh, late 80s, early 90s from both of these guys um, and everybody has respect for them and their physiques were phenomenal and they probably both had more covers than uh, some of the Mr. Olympias. So they were a true success. So I'll say that's who uh, those two guys were.